You know, most people don't understand why pros continually win over normal players. It seems obvious, but it's not. And that's the funny part about this video. Most people think that being a pro just means you're naturally better than everyone else. Therefore, why do I have to be analytical about it? You're just bigger than me, better than me, faster than me, smarter than me. That's why you're winning but that's often not the case. In fact, most often players with just the same level of potential but who lose constantly could be in a situation where the pros are winning every single game that they step into a lobby in, whether it's your bronze lobbies, a casual pub match, or predator games. The key difference is the secrets that the pros understand that most players refuse to learn or just have no knowledge or no way to run across them in their everyday. That's why I'm making this video. Five tips that pros abuse most players refuse to learn or never knew existed in the first place. We're going to break them down, apply them to your game, show you some real strong examples of other high-level players doing them so that next time you step out into Apex Legends, when there's one team winning out of 20, it'll be you. Let's get into the five rules pros abuse most players refuse to learn in Apex Legends. In this video, we're going to talk about five specific rules, and I'm going to break each one down so you understand them at their core level and how to apply them to your own games. I'm also going to use myself and many things that I've seen over the course of covering Apex and the ALGS as a professional caster and playing the game since day one to expand upon why people who are maybe at an average or a little above average skill level make these mistakes and don't do it differently. Let's get started with number one, which is self-awareness. Self-awareness is a super broad topic. I can understand some of you saying self-awareness, what is this, a, a, a personal development seminar? Yes and no. I think getting better at Apex Legends is often a personal development journey because you have to be very honest with not only where you're going, but where you're starting. In life, most people have a difficult time really looking at themselves, what they've accomplished, where they're at, where their skill level is, and then making a strong choice to improve from there. But that's the only way you get better. Myself often goes into playing Apex Legends every day, being able to just say, well, let's just play and see what happens, versus acknowledging my skill of where I am, what I would like to improve on, and then how to turn that into a more successful experience. One of the things pros do is they give each other that level of self-awareness day in and day out in their communications. And one of the teams that I love that does this so well is TSM FTX, the recent winners of the ALGS $250,000 North America playoffs. Now, I watched TSM FTX train, having subbed out Snipe Down and put in Verholes, and try to account for how will their team work well together. And the big thing that I noticed is that they were all very aware of where they stood within the lobby. Most people thought that they were washed. Most people did not believe they had the same firepower as before. And TSM, instead of hiding from that, saying we're the best, ended up accepting that that was where people thought they were, acknowledging their own skill, and then moving forward in a much better way to not only do what they needed to do, but to prove people wrong. So what are some concrete examples of not being self-aware that you could use to help you become more self-aware and improve your games? One would be obviously taking too much time out of the objective that's going to serve you well. I know a lot of people get caught up in 1v1 fights when their team is needing to rotate or do something else. That just means you're maybe having horse blinders on, doing something without the awareness of what the overall goal of why you're doing that thing is for. If you're working out at the gym, it's not just to lift the weights, it's to ultimately look a little bit better in your body, feel healthier, have an overall improvement. But if you focus on the bicep curl so much that you forget why you're at the gym, then that tends to be a problem. A lot of people get caught up in looting too much. And pros, what you'll notice, spend very little time looting because loot is always around the corner. Especially when you're fighting at a high level, you are finding ways to get loot even faster by taking it from your enemies versus spending a lot of time on the ground running for it. And we've all had those teammates who spend too much time looting. So how do I get better at becoming more self-aware and learning what my bad habits are so I can fix them in my game? The best way to do this is to record yourself with a software like Open Broadcast Software, which is free to download, and you could pretty much put it on any device that you have. This will allow you to record your own footage, play, and then when you're done, whether you win or lose, watch it back. Then, when you watch back with a careful, considerate eye, you'll be able to notice, hey, I spent too much time looting, and my teammate died while in a skirmish that I wasn't a part of. And if I was, maybe we would have won that fight. Or in a final circle, I stayed too long on the edge and didn't push. Or maybe I pushed too early. All of these things will be clicks and light bulbs inside of your head to allow you to really take 
an honest count of where you are as a player and where your vital mistakes are. And if you do it enough, you'll start to notice themes. I'm too aggressive. I spend too much time looting. I actually am not good in 1v1s. I missed most of my shots whenever I was in an isolated fight. These things will help you to know exactly where to now turn the knob in other ways to start practicing and improving your skill. So now that you're self-aware, most pros then take this to the next step of becoming accountable. Accountability is amazing. It's one of the best things that will change your life forever, whether you're in Apex or out of it. But how does it apply to your game, being accountable for what you're doing? Let's take a look. Looking back at TSM FTX again, the best team in North America at the moment, accountability and self-awareness are two of the things that I wanna highlight about how they play and why it makes them so successful. Accountability truly is not a bad thing, but it can be hard to accept, especially when someone doesn't deliver you good information in the right way. Saying that you messed up or saying that you should have done something better is a tough pill to swallow, especially if a part of you is already being self-critical about not being good enough and knowing you should have done better as well. But TSM FTX and specifically Imperial Hal does not shy away from being confrontational to the point where you have to acknowledge that what you did didn't work and you can't do that again if we want to be successful. Shot, this guy. Dude. Like you just went in there by yourself, fucking relax, it's a meta team. I kept calling out, it's two people, they're split and Jordan hit the jibby for like 60. Those are free as fuck. I, Those are just fucking pussies. Bro, you went into the gas to kill yourself. Oh, just shut up. Me, I, I couldn't go into my body. Really, Literally two pads right next to you. Guys. What's funny to me is that some of you guys won't even watch my videos when I make them on Hal. And that's honestly because you've left comments saying you think he's just a mean-spirited person. This is not true. As a former athlete being drafted into the MLS with DC United after spending four years at UCLA, I understood that kind of tough leadership and what it got out of players who really wanted to push themselves. It is definitely not for the weak of heart, and it's something that you need to build tolerance up for. But overall, what I like about it is that it gets you to the greater good, the highest good of what you're trying to achieve, which is becoming a better player. If you want to just make mistakes and have nobody call you out, maybe you don't need a video like this. See, it's one step to know what you did wrong, but when you do it wrong over and over again, someone has to let you know that that behavior has to be fixed. How do we take this into our normal games, though, especially if we're not playing in ranked? This is where you have to start using a mic and be cooperative with your teammates, but also instructional. Now, this sounds like a very abstract idea and also communicate with your teammates. That's pretty simple, even though most players refuse to do it because they're afraid of the toxic culture in Apex Legends or in online video games. And listen, I, I get it. I've been a part of it, too. But here's a great example of how to be accountable in a situation that ended up losing TSM a final game. I've earned it at our height. Bubble Custic or Bubble Ear? Bubble Ear is no! Is this corner safe on me? Oh. Fly up. I couldn't. Just fly up. Fly up, Varhouse. Why are you not flying up? No. Why are you just not playing your life? Because I thought. That's a bad idea. Yeah, I actually flew out the whole time. I went to help yeah, you guys. You always play your life. You're the our way to win. What I love about that interaction is both players honestly think they're doing what they need to do. Hal knows that he's fighting on the ground in the skirmish as he should. And Verholz is protecting his teammates and contributing to the fight because he doesn't want to leave them to die without him putting in any damage. The problem is when Hal accounts for this and says, you are our win condition, Verholz is now made accountable for what he's supposed to be doing on the team. As a Valkyrie, he needs to fly up into the air and buy as much time as possible. His goal, because of his kit and the goal of TSM to win, not just to fight together, but to win, is to stay alive, since he's the only player and the only character who has the ability to do so in that situation. This is a small moment, but it helps you to understand that this is why pros keep improving. They keep having these conversations with one another, where oftentimes in a pub game or in a ranked game, we don't talk about it. Change that habit now. Get your mic on, become accountable to your other players, and also accountable to yourself. Recording your own footage, having those earnest and honest conversations, or even have a friend take a look at it and let them tell you what you could have done a little bit better. That will help you to improve and obviously become a better player each day. So instead of just saying, I want to become an aim god, you're becoming more self-aware of what your actual weaknesses are. You're taking steps to improve them, and you're holding your other players accountable, and they're also holding you accountable to make better decisions within the game. So now what? 
It's all about number three, which for some reason is one of the hardest things to do, not only in Apex Legends, but in life, is to repeat. Okay, so we've been on some very granular foundational tips, but we are going to get more specific as this video ends. So stay tuned for that, because we'll talk about animation canceling with a Wraith, we'll talk about Gibby bubble fighting, we'll talk about things like bunny hopping and super gliding. But give me a second here while we set a good pace for you guys to understand the entirety of how to improve in Apex Legends. Repetition is one of the most important things to do in life. They say 10,000 hours before you master a craft. But how do you put those hours in consistently? In Apex, there's one of the best ways to do it that I just don't see players do enough and I myself have been guilty of because I feel it's not worth it. But imagine the possibilities of if you did. One of the best wingman players and in-game leaders in all of Apex Legends Europe, RPR for scars, allows himself to warm up for about 30 to 45 minutes a day using this really cool trick of putting the bots within the firing range to become moving targets. Now you might be thinking, yeah, I know about this trick. 30 minutes a day, that's no big deal. But 30 minutes a day isn't just 30 minutes a day. It's three and a half hours a week. It's 14 hours a month. It's the ability for every single quarter you to become a better, better player, putting in hours and hours of work over your opponents. What becomes a difficult shot with a wingman now becomes second nature because you've done it for hours and hours each week. And this is where most pros know they have to put their time in. Being good at aiming doesn't just happen in Apex Legends. It doesn't happen in any FPS. It's the same thing like playing a sport. When you have to go out there and learn how to shoot a three-pointer in basketball, or to learn how to take a free kick or a corner kick in playing football or soccer, you know that you've got to practice. Otherwise, it's not going to be ready to have any impact in a game. This is what we don't do often in video games because there's this overall sense that who cares? I'm gonna get better as I play more, but unless you have a purpose to your practice and a purpose to your repetition, like we talked about it before, you will not progress. Now, as you get this repetition going, you're gonna find your aim improving and you're gonna find yourself being more confident to focus on these other skills, which is really how you start to become a better player. Because Apex Legends, yes, at the highest level is about aiming. The problem is everyone can aim just as well. So all you're doing is evening out your playing field. What now becomes the most interesting part is how you use the micro techniques, the micro skills that we're gonna talk about, and how you understand the major macro uses of the game, how to rotate, how to play final circles well, and what team composition is going to be successful in a high level lobby. If you wanna get better, commit to 20, 30, hey, even 10 minutes a day, because over the course of a week and a month and several months, it is going to add up. So whatever you decide to do, try it for at least a month. It seems like a long time, but take it day by day. Figure out something that's reasonable. Five minutes of warming up, 15 minutes of playing a little bit of extra Apex Legends, one more drop when you would have maybe called it a night, and then find yourself after that month recognizing how well you've improved or what you've gotten better at. As long as you do that, you're self-aware, you hold yourself accountable for what you need to get better at, and you also continually work at it, you will find yourself ready and more ready for those Apex Legends Predator lobbies. There's no shortcut, there's no rocket science, this is just how you get better in first person shooters or really in anything in life that matters. Okay, so let's get into the micro skills because this is tip number four. Understanding some key micro skills that will allow you to differentiate yourself from a bad or a new player to a great or a pro player is super important in this game. I put together a list of a few micro skills that I think are essential for any player at a high level to master and bring with them in a way where they don't even think about it. They're so easily accustomed to doing these behaviors. Let's start off with armor swapping. If you don't know how to armor swap, you down a player and when their box shows up, you immediately click on the open inventory button. As that inventory is opening, the box should be falling to the ground and you should quickly be either scrolling or moving your stick down to pick up their new armor. This means that even though you might have taken 25 damage in that fight, or maybe even 75 damage and almost broken your purple shield, you'll have a brand new fresh shield on you, so you will save yourself the three and a half to five seconds it would have taken to use a shield battery. It's essentially an instant full heal for your shield. Why is this so important? Because oftentimes in high level play and in any Apex Legends game, you will not have time to heal up before every single fight, especially if you're fighting three people, as once you down one player, you, we all know the second and the third player from that team typically show up right away. So armor swapping gives you a fresh, fair start for you to keep taking 
pretty much even 1v1s, or at least buy you some time to get around a corner, hide behind a door, and actually hit a med kit or a syringe if you happen to have gotten extremely low. At the highest level of play, this is a must-learn technique, and so if you're not comfortable with this, practice and practice again. If you're running out of healing and you know someone's approaching, but there's a downed player in front of you, one of the best ways to do this is just try to sneak behind them, finish them off, and get that shield from them instead of trying to heal with a shield battery yourself. It's often faster, it's more successful to allow you to get rid of one player who could be revived, and it's ultimately something that pros abuse a lot of average players never use. Two is bunny hopping. This is very simple. If you don't know how to bunny hop, you basically run at a sprint, slide, and then jump. When you're sliding, your momentum is increased, and jumping allows you to carry that momentum until you land again, meaning that you'll be able to cover distance on the map faster than if you were just sprinting. This is one of the most fundamental techniques in Apex Legends, so you have to learn this micro skill as you will see any high-level player or any player who's played Apex for a while doing this. Wall jumping. Now, wall jumping is often not important, but you will see high-level players like Hockeys or even a couple of clips from my own gameplay utilizing wall jumping for a strategic and tactical technique, and that's really where I think it becomes viable. Alliance Hockeys uses wall jumps extremely well to not only gain distance, but to hit trajectories in terms of his movement that he would never be able to hit without it. It allows you to slide jump onto the wall, and as you're facing the wall, face a different direction backwards kick off with your space bar or your jump button, and then take that momentum up into the air for an accelerated movement and also the ability to gain more distance than you would have before. The benefit of this is you're changing heights, speeds, and trajectory. So an opponent who's been aiming at you will have a very difficult time tracking your movement. We showcase this in a 1v1 in our five rules video for Ross, something I suggest you take a look at if you wanna see this in depth. Ross was facing against a Mastiff who was about to finish him off, but he uses a very nice wall jump to just space himself out a little bit and throw off the timing of the player who was being aggressive. He's then able to finish him off only because he's really changed the dynamic of how that player thought they were engaging in their peeking and poking battle. Yes, it's flashy. Yes, it's fun. But a lot of times it has a very tactical and strategic use to throw an opponent off from being able to hit that final shot that might be the difference between you winning or losing. So learning how to wall jump and putting it into your gameplay without having to think about it will make you a high level player, or at least give you the tenets of what we see all high level players being able to do. Now that we've covered some basic high-level techniques that pros abuse, most players refuse to lose and add to their game, let's talk about a couple of legend-specific techniques and go even more granular on a couple of our more popular legends in the meta, Wraith and Gibraltar. Small things can sometimes make big differences, like getting your gun out in a fight a little bit faster than your opponent, and that especially matters with Wraith. Alliance Hockey is one of the best in-game leaders, meaning he tells his teammates what to do and they follow him, and also plays for one of the best teams in Europe, Alliance, found a way to animation cancel with Wraith. And this is really something that as a Wraith player, you should be aware of. Animation canceling essentially means that after you're using your ultimate, if you take out your R301, your R99, or your favorite gun beforehand, then go into your ultimate, you will land outside of that ultimate with your gun in your hand ready to fight. This means you can have a quick re-aggression onto an opponent, especially if your portal happens to be in the middle of chaos, which in the final circle of high-level games tends to be the case. This may not be a big deal in most situations, but for those trying to be the best Wraith player they can, or any legend for that matter, combining these basic skills and then taking the legend-specific skills and just being half a second better than maybe another Wraith that you face in an Apex Legends Predator lobby is a big difference. And who are we kidding? At the highest level, it's the small things that make the biggest separations amongst teams who are already all very good. Gibraltar is another legend who has a very specific technique that needs to be mastered, which is using the gun shield in his bubble fights. Using Gibraltar in a final circle, maybe where you throw your dome down and it's you versus the other team, dancing in that bubble fight, trying to get the last shot with the Mastiff, one of the biggest differences can be, does your enemy hit you or do they hit your gun shield? So many high level players have yet to master the perfect timing on using Gibraltar's gun shield, which gives you, when you're aiming down sights for a certain period of time, a 50 health shield to block incoming damage. For a character that already has 15% damage reduction, 50 health on the shield is a lot to add. So making sure that your opponent shoots that and doesn't shoot you is a huge differentiator between the best Gibraltars and the ones who come out on top in those bubble fights. This is one that you can't really get better at unless you just practice. So there's not much to go into here, 
but really knowing that there are specific elements to how to be a better version of your own legend should give you a lot to work on, especially as you continue to play more Apex Legends over the coming months. For more basic legend tips and also to look at this in a more in-depth way, make sure to stay tuned here leaving a like on this video, but also subscribing if this is the kind of content that allows you to improve and see the game maybe in a better way so you can get rid of some of your mistakes and start moving towards the player that you want to become. I certainly know that sometimes tips videos can help refocus my mentality onto stuff that I haven't been thinking about that now allows me to really make a fast track forward into improving my gameplay. Now, the last tip that I've learned in Apex Legends and maybe the most important tip of all is to find a mentor. Over the last few months, I've been making a lot of tip videos. I've had a lot of fun doing it, and you guys have loved it. Our five rules series has been blowing up in many ways, and it's been a great new format for me to invest in learning what it means to be a high-level player and how to then break that down and make it simple and easy for my audience and other Apex Legends players to improve. One thing I didn't notice is that I would find myself learning every single day. Having an analytical eye on why and how these players were doing such amazing things that I wasn't necessarily incorporating into my own game. The importance of finding a mentor is, to me in my life, something that's been really magical. I've been fortunate growing up playing sports to have great mentors and coaches my whole life, and they've always given me something to improve on that I wouldn't have done myself. Over the course of the last few months, watching these pro players and making videos for you guys has allowed me to find mentors in them. Whether it's TSM, FTX, Imperial Howl, and the way that he communicates with his teammates in that kind of gruff but still commanding way that shows that he's not willing to take any BS, but he has your best interests at heart that I related to so much when my coaches would do that, me getting on the field for UCLA. Or maybe it's Shiv FPS, a guy who has so much fun, but seriously has a lot of passion and hours put into the game that makes you think, wow, if I just spent that much time doing anything, I'd probably be incredible. And that leadership quality that he brings to a final fight with that energy is enthusiastic and it's infectious, something I need to add to my game and to anything that I do in my life. Or maybe it's the history of Alliance Hockeys, what I feel is one of the best in-game leaders in all of Apex and definitely in Europe, one of the best teams, taking his history from being in the army and using that to command his teammates in final zones in a way that is impossibly beautiful to watch and really allows you to see the power of true leadership, not only in-game, but out of game as well, and how that can affect a person and give them a leg up in terms of the competition. Having someone that inspires you, that knows somewhere to go that you haven't been yet is the key to a mentor because it allows you to aim your sights up towards where ultimately you will become a better version of yourself. My journey here as a caster and as someone who makes content on YouTube and loves Apex Legends has been watching these incredible players do what they do best and allowing myself to learn how to become a better player and then put that into my content to teach all of you. Which is why I suggest that you subscribe here to Rain Day Gaming, join me on the road to 400,000, and allow me to mentor you to help bridge the gap between what these players are doing and why and how you can put them into your games to improve your own Apex Legends play. So whether it's me, whether it's a pro player, or maybe it's some combination of your favorite stream and a breakdown from me later, make sure to keep it locked here on Rain Day Gaming and to never give up and never stop gaming because that's the only way we get to where we want to go in the end. As always, guys, take care. I'll see you next time.